interesting number there. <laughs> As I was looking down many times, 14 has been in my life. Driving, that's what I do. Linda here, Serene and Simple Life. I am so excited. Today is a big day. As I head back to two different pieces of property, land, lots, whatever you want to call it, that are on my short list to purchase for a tiny home cabin. I am visiting with filmmaker Sebastian. If you've uh, watched those couple videos, they're really fun. Actually, I don't know what order I'll be putting all of this in, but I'm thinking they already were uploaded and public. But anyways, he is going to film me checking out these pieces of land a second time. But not only that, the developer of the one uh, area, he has not developed this particular piece of land that I'm going to be looking at yet. Uh, he hasn't developed it yet. Uh, I'm going to meet him for the first time. His name's Charles. And then I am going to meet with Matt this afternoon, who is selling a different piece of land, obviously. And they are quite the contrast. Not Charles and Matt. <laughs> the land. I have no idea if I'll know today or if I'll know three months from now whether or not either pieces of, of land here will work, just so you know. I'm not down to making a decision between the two. They're on my short list right now. I've looked at over 30 pieces of land. There's a 15 part series showing you everything I looked at. I find it quite interesting because you yourself if you decide to look for land or you know someone's looking for land, it's a fun story of the journey. And I'm emphasizing that because it's not to confuse you, it's not to uh, say, is she buying land or is she not buying land? This is my journey, my journey. When I first took off two years ago, I had the thoughts of a she shed what they were calling them back then. I guess they're still calling them. I don't care for that, she shed. I think it cheapens the whole concept of what people are trying to do. So I'm still coming up with something. I don't like tiny home cabin. That's too many words. I don't like uh, shabin, even though I thought I did, because that just sounds like, what are you talking about? It just might boil down to Happy Haven number two. <laughs> Happy Haven the second. You know, like a family. Uh, I'm Johnny the second. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Anyways, uh, that was a bunny trail. The contrast, contrast of the land and what I'm going to be thinking about. The first piece of land I'm looking at with Charles, he's not 100% certain that he's going to be developing this land. I get a good feeling that he is because he's taking the time to talk to me. We've talked on the phone a couple times. Um, we're meeting today. He's talking about what he wants to do with it. He's, you know, it's not just a pie in the sky ideal that he has, though, he has to take it to a commission. I think it's called a commission. 
and jump through hoops. And those are his words. I've got to jump through hoops in order to get this project approved. What he wants to do is he wants to cut up four pieces of his farmland outside a beautiful million dollar suburbs. I mean, it's right there. It's right up the road. Cut up these four pieces and bring in tiny home cabins. He wants to see pictures today of what I am talking about. I guess, you know, like how classy is this? Is this just really a shed that you want to put up? What are, you know, what are you thinking? So I guess he mulls over his ideals of what he can do and as he makes his proposal, I guess. I've uh, been up front with him. There's no need to waste his time. I want to do under 400 square feet, <clears throat> more like 350 square feet. I've been talking. Now that could change. <clears throat> I could go bigger if I need to a little bit, or I may decide to go a little smaller, but my thoughts are a 12 by 30, six feet of that being a porch. So we're going to discuss, and he has land that's uncleared. Now I have made it a, pretty much a, a generalized decision that I'm overlooking at uncleared land. Unless it's a, a pretty clean sweep, I don't want to bring in an excavator and uh, truck loads, uh, haul in dirt and level off land and 10 or $15,000 later, now you've got a level lot. I'm not interested in that. I don't have the money for that. I would much rather put that into slider windows and picture boxes, or uh, flower boxes. <laughs> just to give you the, the short thought on that. So, but never say never. Okay, so I'm open. I've already looked at the land and it's, and I've shown you the land. Uh, I did mention it was on my short list. It was where all the deer were. So I will I'll film it real quick again for you today. I'm not disclosing locations or anything like that. So no need to ask me where exactly this is. It's in Tennessee and that's about as, uh, specific as I'm going to get. That's for safety. That's not to, uh, you know, anything else. Eventually, I'd like to have some company. Some of you come visit, and that would be really cool. Then the other plot of land is, okay, so now we've got the, the wooded, and we don't know if it's going to be developed or not, and it's only going to be like four lots, and it's, it's, uh, in the, in the more rural, it's more wooded feeling. It's definitely wooded feeling. And there's not gonna be traffic coming back and forth and kind of gonna just be sitting, you know, there trying to paint a picture in the quiet with maybe two or three neighbors and maybe not. Uh, the reason Charles has thought about doing this is he said, when I mentioned to him, and it's the funniest thing, I called Charles because the zoning commission told me to call him when I was looking at another piece of property and wanted to know what the restrictions were. They said, Charles has developed a lot of property in this area, call him and find out if he knows, he should probably know what the restrictions are for this other piece of property that I was considering, or I was gonna go look at actually, I wasn't considering. So I did, and that's how I got I mean, that's how God works. I mean, that's just the bottom line. That's how God works. So I told Charles what I wanted to do. And lo and behold, he said, oh, I have a, f a few people, a couple other of my uh, people I've talked to who would like to move into a tiny home. You know, and tiny homes can range anything from like $30,000 when all said and done uh, up to, you know, $120,000 or more. So I'm well aware of that. <laughs> And I'm also aware that he's, Charles has built uh, subdivisions, developed with million dollar homes. So whether or not my under 30, $35,000, that would be really maxing it out. I don't really want to spend 35. Uh, if that will fit into his uh, picture, I don't know. So let's move on now to Matt. Matt is the second land I'm going to be looking at. I called Matt about another property that he had listed and we started talking and he said uh, there was no restrictions but he talked about how it's pretty hilly and we 
need excavation and it's not cleared and so that knocked that one out of the ballpark right away and he said but but my broker has bought a large tract of land and he's going to cut it up and I think he said about 18 lots anything from a half an acre to two acres and he's gonna sell off I think he's, no, three quarters of an acre, I think he said he was gonna start at, but that's, again, that's a, 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 a mood detail that I don't really know for sure. Smaller lots up to two and two acres, he's gonna sell them. And he is jumping through hoops and he's getting the soil tested uh, to see if the water will perk. And this particular property, the second one I'm gonna look at today, will not be even on the market for maybe another 45, days to two months so it's it's great timing the and I'll tell you why in a minute the second piece of land is like prairie land with a woods backdrop Matt asked his broker if indeed this is unrestricted but unrestricted there's that fine line you may already know do not forget to ask how about square footage restrictions? Because land, I have found, there's that gray area. Land can be unrestricted until you mention 350 square feet. And then they're like, no, no, we're not putting up a, a shed here. Even though it's not gonna be a shed. So I asked Matt specifically, please ask your broker if 350 square feet works. And his broker, said, yes, I think we can make it work. We could put her in the back. I wanted to be in the back anyways. <laughs> There's shade in the back and that's where the trees are. I didn't get a 100% yes, we will make it work. I got yes, I think we will, can make it work. So now God's in the details. Do I go for prairie land? Do I go for in the woods? Prairie land is probably 10 or 15 minutes from a cute little town. So that makes me happy. There's, there will be more neighbors. Um, and I'm thinking that we're not going to be that close, but we're going to be where we can see each other and wave and holler if we needed to. I'm going to weigh out the pros and cons of both. And I don't know if either one will come to fruition. So with that, my plan now is to go to Florida and work. I am going to pretty, I'm thinking pretty much I'm going to go to Walmart and I'm not going to reveal location until, I'm, until later. But I'm going to work throughout the uh, holiday season and of course we're right there in the midst of it now or maybe just a little bit past it when you see this. Because I do have those 15 land videos coming up. I'm gonna work, I'm gonna save a little more money, um, banking as much as I can so that I can pay cash for my land and my cabin. Work, 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 and see where God takes it. And if both of these end up where the door closes on them, I will come back to Tennessee eventually, and I'm not sure whether that will be in the spring summer, next fall, if I'll just go on a friend's journey like I talked about, or if I'll come back to Tennessee and start to get things moving towards buying the, you know, buying the land. And oh, I should, yeah, I forgot too, one of the really details that's going to push things forward sooner rather than later is Matt said once this land goes on the market, he thinks that perhaps within a week all the lots will be gone so I may have to pray 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 well I will be and make a decision and be in touch with Charles and let him know you know how's it going what's good what's going on because if I lose the opportunity with Matt and then I find out Charles is not going to come to fruition well then that just that just close the door on both of them so a lot of praying in the meantime and I've let both Charles and Matt know that I have the other property that I'm looking at so when we're talking I don't have to talk around that thought 
but that they will understand where I'm coming from with, hey, when do you think? What do you think? I need to know. And I won't come, you know, just be so, if I didn't tell them, oh, there was a sign on the barn that just said, Christ died for our sins. And it was a real old rundown rickety barn. Anyways, um, I can speak more freely when you're honest and open and, you, and letting these people know I've got another piece of land I'm considering. It's totally different than what you're offering or could be offering. Um, so I, I'll have to be more um, direct with my questions about the timing. If I decide, especially I told Charles I was going to work for the uh, winter and he's like well then this might be perfect timing because he's not going to have a lot of answers till after the first of the year and he said for tax reasons he won't sell it now hmm I don't know as I talk I feel like I'm getting an answer that I may not know about Charles's land in time to make a decision on either one I mean to make a dis you know to let Unless Matt's land is held up for some reason till the beginning of the year with soil testing and timing of all that, I may be able to make a decision between the two of them. Or God just may make that decision and make it as clear as a clear blue sky day and I won't have to uh, belabor the points and the thoughts and the pros and the cons. And that would be cool too. So can't go wrong when you're in God's corner. I'll show you the land now, and if you would uh, please put in the comments what you think. Which do you th uh, think would be a better suitable? I want remote, but not too remote. I like privacy, but I like neighbors. I like being close to a small town, and I'm not 100% sure how close I am in this uh, first piece I'm looking at, the woods. I'll call it the woods and the prairie. How about that? <laughs> The woods and the flatland. The woods and the flatland. That, yeah, that, that's where I'll call it. Okay. All right. So put in the comments which one you like better and why. Because it might get me thinking about things that I haven't even thought about. All right. Show it to you here in a few minutes. There it is, guys. Land number one on the short list. I came in a different direction and it's... It's amazing the when you're listening to your gut and feelings and I'm just not sure. Uh, I don't know exactly. Oh look. Animals. I am not sure how far up I should be here or that is, I'm gonna be waiting on Charles and he'll be showing me where the different plots are. Um, yeah, pretty excited, pretty excited. I'm, I guess I'm, I, I'm more, the word would be over a little, not overwhelmed, but um, you know, just in that, okay, <laughs> what next? Like, I don't feel any sense of urgency here. I just feel like this is what I needed to do, was to meet Charles today and meet Matt. And I have a little list of questions. Everything that I'll answer myself, like cell service and, uh, you know, the, the timing and the costs involved. And, yeah, just not sure. Just not sure here. Um, I don't know if his, the other day when I was here, I looked at right, well, I was here like, shoot, over well over a week, two weeks now probably. Uh, I looked at like this area right here, but I don't know if we have to go up further here. I'm thinking maybe up further. So there it is basically. Uh, he said there was a cleared lot, which that might be this, and then the three wooded lots up above. So we'll just have to go from there and see see what we can see. Hi Sebastian. All righty. I'll take you to the shortlist number 2 in a little while.
So just finished talking to Charles, a couple hours, got a lot of beautiful history about this area. Oh, and he's uh, passionate and just a, just, a, just a lovely gentleman. I mean, I am emotionally attached right now. So we're gonna talk in a while. Uh, he has to get some answers from some people before we can even think about moving forward. But it's all along here, up into this area up here. It gets a little bit more wooded, and then it also slopes more the further up you go. And he's thinking about perhaps, I don't know, four to seven lots here. But he is really, was very generous and kind with my uh, questions and the things I need answers about uh, to say that he just doesn't know. It's more like in that 50-50, and now it's in God's hands. A beautiful believer, um, shared some of his own insights being on this earth just a little bit longer than me, probably. And uh, it, was, uh, it was delightful. He took us down to the lake, and this area is absolutely stunning, and I am in love. So on to... The next place okay so here we are here we are here we are i'm at the second piece of land lot plot wide open here and this is long narrow one acre they go straight back to the tree line beautiful view over there And all the way up there to the corner. There's a farm over here and a nursery over here. And interesting, different settings. And now I just have to wait on the Lord, the timing, which everything I shared with you. This could be ready way before the first land, and this is a definite go. Now we don't know 100% about the square footage, although I think I do. He says I'll th I th that he thinks it'll work. I said we need to th take the word think out <laughs> and know that it'll work or that, it, that I can do that. Um, so the, the uh, Affiliate broker is going to get back with me. His name's Matt. He's a really, really nice guy. I enjoyed meeting him. He spent a lot of time with me answering all my questions. And, of course, I would place the tiny home closer to the road here. And then you cut in a driveway. There's, no going to, there's not going to be any road in the middle. He says often developers, they don't put a road in because roads are really expensive. So... We go way back. He said this is about 400 feet back, but then up above, it's more like, it's 200 less, I guess it's only 200 feet back because it's really long and narrow here. So, oh my gosh, so much to think about. The pros and the cons. This is pretty close to a town, about 15 minutes. Um, the other one feels a bit remote, although it's near a body of water, too, that you can walk to. And there might be just seasonal neighbors there. He doesn't know for sure. There might be some, reg you know, some people who move in. And this is going to be, you know, straight in a row here. So I don't know. I don't know. I am... Uh, Gonna put the thoughts to pen and paper, as they say, the pros and the cons list, and then just let God reveal his plan. That's about where we're at for today. I like both of them for different reasons. I like this one for the flat. I, there's, uh, but this also requires a septic 
and you have to get your water meter and you may have to run a, the telephone poles. We're not sure with the electric, that could be expensive. And it feels like the other place may be, uh, when all said and done, more set up, but <clears throat> it may cost more money right out of the gate too. So I guess one thing is, I think this is definitely resaleable property here, as would be the others. And if this came available before Charles made a decision on the other, that uh, who knows, could come a time when I move too. I could sell this and, and move. I hate to think of that word move as soon as, you're bu as soon as you buy, but it is that possibility. So, okay, Kyle's up the road there. That's about it. Pretty blue skies on this side over here. And the sun has come out several times today during the conversations, which always makes me feel like uh, God speaking. <laughs> but it's come out at both places. I don't know, God sometimes gives us more than one choice too, right? And either one of them would be beautiful for different reasons. So now, your vote, number one or number two. Blessings in your day and joy in the journey. Later.